Well, good good afternoon. It's not morning anymore, is it? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to today's daily esoteric influences. I went ahead and I finished them and I posted them for this next week over on the blog. I also cross posted it over on Medium. Uh, I did a little link to it over on the Patreon page. Uh, but in any event, if you want to follow along, um, I'll just talk a little bit. You can run over there, grab it, and and pull it up, and, and you can follow along if you want to. Otherwise, uh, check it out later if you want to, and uh, I'd love you to do that and just see what's happening for the coming week. Um, let's see. Uh, I was just outside planting borage, so uh, I, I once, you, once you grow borage, you grow borage. It just reseeds itself. It goes everywhere. But we have an apiary. We have, we're beekeepers, and I love growing borage around my bees. They love it. Uh, my chickens love it. And so um, what we did is we planted a whole bunch of transplants up the driveway. We have an 800-foot driveway. And so we planted a bunch there, planted it around uh, so that the bees are attracted to it. It provides food for other pollinators and, and uh, all of that. So if you're, if you're thinking about some fun things to do for bees and pollinators, borage is something you can do once. And there you go. It's... It's the gift that keeps on giving, but it's great. You know, you can use it uh, medicinally. Uh, the leaves and flowers can be used for fever, cough, uh, depression. Uh, they can purify the blood, um, prevents lung inflammation. So, you know, to use it in teas, you can do that as well. But, you know, and like I say, if you have chickens, you know, they're going to love you if you give them some borage, you know, once in a while. So it's, it's, they just love it. I don't know. They just love it. I had no idea. I was looking up one day, well, what do chickens eat? You know from the garden and stuff and i and so i thought well let me check on herbs as well and i uh, found all kinds of things oregano all, all kinds of stuff that they can have i don't want them in my chickweed though that that i harvest <laughs> so I, I won't let them around that but uh, anyway uh today we have it's the 14th of june so we're talking a five energy uh, we want to take all precautions today of going out and about particularly if you're going to go join a gathering of some kind uh, the virus is spiking in many areas in the country, so wear a mask, gloves, and wash your hands often. Uh, and if you are out there marching for social change and racial justice, thank you. Uh, remain true to your cause today, and uh, uh, don't become part of the uh, opposition movement that seems to want to undo all of the uh, uh, good things that have been happening so far. A lot of good conversations, some changes happening around the country, and uh, getting police into a better into a better set of boundaries so that they can actually be better at their job instead of constantly, you know, feeling like they got to do other stuff that gets them into trouble that they don't want to talk about. And then for some reason, they don't have to. Isn't that amazing? Well, we're seeing some of that come down too. So in any event, uh, uh, we have Yera today, which is this particular rune. It's Kenaz, the, the torch or the light of spirit turned inward, inward and outward. It's basically an as above, so below rune. Uh, one of, there's, there's several that, that really have that kind of moving energy, you know, from spirit into form kind of feeling to them. And Yera is one of them. Uh, it's meaning, it's an earth element rune. It, it's transformative. It brings balance. It's a, it's a, a representation of give and take of cycles. Uh, it's an herbalism rune, uh, gardening rune. It talks, it, it basically represents unfolding awareness, uh, energetic alignment. Also, as I said, uh, uh, initially, it means the year uh, or the word year. Uh, and it also uh, uh, suggests fertility. So, um, I think for today, how that impacts today on this Sunday, uh, we want to, if, if we're engaging with others to do, today, let's do it safely. Let's protect uh, both self and others. Uh, and uh, uh, I know, uh, well, anyway, Connie Schultz is a journalist. She's married to Senator Sherrod Brown. And uh, she made a, a, she did a tweet today that said, yeah, you know, it kind of lets you know who wears a mask, who doesn't. You know, if you're trying to figure out who to date and all of that is what she's saying, kind of gives you an insight as to whether or not they're going to care about you or not. And she says with Sherrod, when she chose, was deciding whether or not to date him, she could check his voting record. <laughs> My husband's like, do you think she did that? I'm like, well, of course she did. And so... She says, but now, you know, you've got this new, in 2020, we have this new dimension to it, you know, of whether or not someone's going to wear a mask. 
So uh, anyway, uh, safely engage with others today and offer assistance where needed and experience the reciprocity fostered by, fostered by a shared sense of purpose and allow that transformative moment to unfold. Uh, right now, we have such an opportunity to come together and understand who we are to one another and, and what our purpose here is, and it's not to be at odds with each other. Okay, so we have this moment now and we can make it be what it needs to be. We just need to stay aligned and and uh, uh, and and walking forward together in a shared path, a shared sense of purpose and a shared direction. So the uh, uh, let's see, I need to take this off. This was from Saturday. That was man asking to take that off. So. The sun is, or not the sun, uh, the moon is in Aries right now. And uh, whenever that's the case, especially if you're going to be out and about marching or, you know, should you come into contact with authorities for some reason, uh, be aware the moon's in Aries. And so you're going to want to be careful. Uh, patience is said to be a virtue, but that virtue may be sorely lacking today with the moon in Aries. So if you're feeling like you want to get into it with anyone, remember that this feeling may pass. So, you know, be sure this is the, the real hill to die on, okay? Make sure it's really an argument you want to have, because if it isn't, if you can let it go, do. The moon in Aries is, is a struggling experience at times, and uh, emotions get in the way of will, and pretty soon maybe you take the bait when, when maybe cooler heads might have not done so. If the moon was in something else, you know, maybe in Libra or something, you know, maybe you wouldn't have felt like doing that. And so again, just be really careful that way today. Um, let's see now, as far as the human design stuff, the I Ching stuff at the end of the, 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 the piece that I do, um, as the virus spikes around the country, we continue to stay home or protected if out and about. That's the sun's placement. And the, uh, as we maintain the, oh, just, let me read this again. As the virus spikes around the country, we continue to stay home or protected if out and about uh, as we maintain the rhythm required to stay the course. Now that's both the sun and Venus's placement uh, on the uh, human design chart today. And uh, I, I just think that most of us that aren't struggling against this whole idea have really gotten into a sense of rhythm. We know what we're going to put up with. We know what we're not. And as the virus spikes around, I mean, we had here on the Oregon coast, there's a, a, a food processing, a fish food processing plant. And there's several locations, I guess. And they've all closed, according to the article I read, because they had 100 people come down with this. And then six more in the area, unrelated, came down with it all at the same time. So something's happening and that and they're real worried on the coast because they just don't have the hospital beds if, if the worst happens here, right? So I don't know what's going to happen there. But every single time we have a, a holiday, this is what happens. Two weeks later, we see the big spike. Well, when is that going to overtake the hospital's ability to deal with it? they still don't have what they need. So, you know, we're, we're not in any better place now than we were, realistically. So to stop wearing masks and gloves and to stop socially distancing and, 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 and all of that just makes no sense right yet. You know, it just doesn't. Uh, as we remain attuned to our collective purpose, allow the spiritual warrior within to speak truth to power expressing the highest principles possible right now as we effectively move around any obstacles thrown in our path. Give the naysayers and oppressors, in other words, no room for any success on their end. We need them to understand that they're, that they're thinking wrongly about this and that the only way we get through it is together, to be on the same page with it. And then, you know, we can deal with it. But if you've always got to worry what the guy, you know, two feet away from you who's not wearing a mask or gloves in the groceries in the Safeway store in my town, who's putting stuff up on the shelves... Well, why would I want to go back there? I mean, I will because they have the coffee my husband likes. But beyond that, no, I, I'm in other words, I'm, I'm shopping with my my I'm paying attention. And if you are not going to keep me safe, I mean, I'm going to go in there with, with a mask and gloves on. So is my husband. Well, then maybe I don't come back. In other words, if we want the reopening of jobs and, and the, the businesses and all of that to take place, 
We all have to do our part to make sure it's successful. That's all anyone's saying, you know. This business of not being able to go to work and make a living, yeah, that's ridiculous. We have to be able to figure out a way to do that. We can't leave people with nothing. So if businesses are going to reopen, they have to do it safely. Require, like Costco, require everybody comes in with a mask, a mask on. Require it of your staff. Just do it. And then before you know it, this is going to be over with. We can go back to normal. Maybe. But if we don't take the bull by the horns now, who knows when that's going to happen? So I, I don't understand the, the conflict here. I don't. I never have. Never will. So anyway, <laughs> that's it, I guess. And uh, thanks so much. And uh, I'll do this again tomorrow for Monday. But if you want to, go over and check it out on the blog. It's over at imsteppingaside.com. And uh, read the whole thing. See what you think. Um, I, I really like looking at non-traditional types of divination stuff when we're looking at the different influences that are going on. I'm really not so much about predictions. Um, all I, I, for that, I use my pendulum. So, <laughs> but I'm not really about, and even with that, you know, it, it just depends, depends on what the energies are. They could shift enough that the next day you might get a different answer. But it just means that something has taken place to shift the, the momentum or the conversation or something into some other area. So, uh, but even with that, you know, I'm very careful about it. I just, I'm not into predictions. I just like to look at where the influences are and what the impact of this and that might be on people to just be aware. It's almost like just giving you a heads up to the energies that are happening in, in any particular given day. So anyway. That's all it really is. So if you like doing stuff like that, like I do, then come back and, and we'll, we'll uh, do this every day. And uh, I took it off of the somewhat daily tarot and rune to reduce the length of time on that because that was getting too crazy. And so um, trying to, in, in, trying to in, uh, basically put together the uh, astrology and all of that with the reading, I'm still going to do a little bit of it, but I won't do to the extent. So anyhow. I kind of like it the way it flows like that better. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Be good to yourself, be good to one another and blessed be.